evening, everyone. How are you? Everybody in the back? If there comes a time when you can't hear me, just put your hand up and I will talk louder. Uh, first of all, my name's Lynn Bosch. I'm the CEO of the hospital, and I thank you for coming tonight. This is our public forum, um, which is, uh, we're trying to present an opportunity for the public to get more information about the deal that we have crafted over a period of a year. Uh, with Northeast Georgia Medical Center and Haversham Medical Center. And so tonight we will provide some context around the strategy and the decision making that drove us in this decision making direction. We'll provide some main deal points so that you'll understand what's in the agreement. We'll provide some uh, pros and cons so that you can see what, at the end of the agreement, at the five-year mark, what we anticipate will happen. And then last, we'll talk about the folks leading the effort. All of these components are required in a public forum, and so um, you're going to get all of it. And I'll try to work through the slides fairly quickly. We do have a question and answer session at the end. Uh, there is a book or a notebook going around somewhere. Um, Anybody got it? Put up your hand. If you want to ask a question because this is a public forum, we need to record your name. Uh, Michelle Madison, who is uh, one of our attorneys, will be facilitating the question and answer session uh, at the end. So if you will just write down your name, if you think you're going to have a question, you don't have to have one right now because you might not know what you want to ask. But when you do have one, please write your name down. We'll be happy to take your question. So let me start by first saying that this is an agreement between the Hospital Authority of Habersham County and the Hospital Authority of Hall County in the city of Gainesville. Now let me explain that a little bit. There is a law on the Georgia books called the Hospital Affiliates Act. And what that allows us to do is go through, uh, uh, go through a traditional merger and acquisition or go through a different route, which we have taken which says that a hospital authority in one county can transact assets with the hospital authority in a contiguous county under certain circumstances. So this agreement is one of those. It's Hall County and Habersham County transitioning assets at the end of the agreement. And that's how you're here to uh, refer to. Okay. Clicker. We're stuck. <laughs> We're stuck. Okay. You know, I can't talk without the slides. Okay, you might have to help me work this through. Um, let me give you a little context on rural hospitals in America. There are hundreds of rural hospitals in America that have closed over recent years. <laughs> In Georgia alone, seven hospitals have closed over the past five years. Um, you'll see on this map depicted those little dots um, indicate a hospital that is closed. And the more populated areas are the ones that are shaded darkest. There's a heavy predominance in the southeast. Now, why, you might ask, is because the southeast tends to have those states that did not expand Medicaid. And so there are more uninsured people driving the health care uh, delivery system. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what happens when a hospital closes. So this hospital in Tennessee uh, was closed, and it was picked up by a provider to reopen as an outpatient clinic. The price? $200,000. My point here is that an open hospital is worth a certain amount of money. A closed hospital is worth a very different amount of money because you're really paying for assets that are no longer operational. Here's another example of a rural hospital group that bid $6.9 million to get a hospital in Kansas out of bankruptcy. So again, another example of a hospital is worth a lot more open than it is closed. But these things are happening all across the country. Now, this is, this is us. This is what I want to explain to you as far as context. This is where I came to hospital, to the Habersham Medical Center right here. 
I was called and asked to come and do some work on operations to improve the expense load of the hospital. The first thing we did was forecast and say, how much patch do we have? And when are we going to close if we don't do something about it? This was my closure date, September of 18. That's what I was looking at. Through a whole lot of work from a lot of people in this hospital, we drove down expenses by three and a half million dollars. That's significant in a short period of time. That pushed us out till the next year, gave us a little breathing room. What happened over that period is we worked on our revenue cycle specifically, and we worked on getting some um, uh, upper, upper limit payments and some disproportionate share payments. That then drove us out to the third X. This was our third projection, which was actually last month. Okay, So we were looking at this as the hospital authority saying, okay, we fixed the operational problems. What are we going to do about our strategy? We're a rural hospital. We're in Georgia. What are we going to do next? And the obvious answer was, we've got to find an affiliate. We've got to find a partner to work with us. The obvious answer was Northeast Georgia Medical Center because the citizens in this county naturally were inclined to use that facility anyway. They were driving to Gainesville. We had a lot of market share overlap. We had a lot of similar values and cultures. And so we started then having some very deep discussion about what would this look like if we were to come together and how would we do it. I think those of you who have been in this county for a while are well aware that there have been two previous failed attempts at a merger with Northeast Georgia Medical Center. So we had to repair trust, we had to rebuild relationships, and we had to do it very purposefully. The line that goes up slightly is the line that we projected to say, if we do the, this deal that we're envisioning, this is going to pull us out of that slump, and it's going to make us a viable hospital for this county, and eventually as part of Northeast Georgia Medical Center. So this is a very real picture of what we've been dealing with for the last couple of years. Now, when we look at what are we worth, um, these are assets that are on our books today exceeding $100,000. We've grouped them in categories for ease of explanation. Land, building, equipment, and leased equipment. We include that because we've put it all in the books. And that gives us a value around $20, $21 million of our operating facility, an open facility. Okay, so we have details on that. And those are the balances as of October 31st of this year uh, that are still unaudited. Those are our unaudited results. Now, if we look at our balance sheet, you're looking at our total assets of $38 million, total liabilities of $48 million. What does that give you? gives you a negative equity position of $10 million. Now that is a further context of telling you why it was not an option not to do something strategically. We had to find a solution to this to keep this organization alive for Habersham County. Now if I move to the main agreement components, and I want to try to walk these through one by one, the Hospital Authority of Hall County and the City of Gainesville, which is how it's labeled, will provide $15 million to our hospital over a five-year period as an option to purchase. They're paying for an option to purchase. Those funds must be spent on capital. In other words, how are we going to maintain and improve this campus, this equipment, this facility, our IT structure, all those things that we need to do? How are we going to improve that to ensure that this remains a viable facility. We remain separate legal entities during this time. This is very important because a lot of folks have come to us to say, oh, you're part of Northeast Georgia Medical Center. We are not. Our plan is to become part of Northeast Georgia Medical Center. Today we are separate entities. And that's important legally because we have to know where those lines are drawn. We are obligated to use those capital funds to improve our patient capacity and support for patients, as well as upgrading our IT platform. Those were two requirements from Northeast Georgia Medical Center. We were happy to comply because we had issues with both. And we have plans in place for those five years to spend those funds on exactly that. We also, back in July, 
signed a separate agreement for clinical services. And that really was the underlying platform for how we're going to make this work. The clinical services agreement brought in the GEDS, or Gainesville Emergency Department Services Group, as well as the Northeast Georgia Provider Group to provide hospital services and emergency services. Now, why was that important? That was important because those two groups are very familiar with each other. They work together in all the other Northeast Georgia medical system hospitals. They had standards of care. They knew that we wanted to keep patients local, and they're working with us to do that. And it's important that we do that, because if we don't have census, we don't have revenue. So we started with that clinical services agreement back in July. That is helping us drive our enhanced revenue model. Now, as we increase our census and increase our revenue, what we're trying to do is to increase our day's cash on hand. That's how much cash we have to actually operate, to 20. Today, we fluctuate anywhere from 1 to 15, depending on where payroll hits. It gets a little scary every once in a while. So we're trying to then get to 20, which is about, for us, $2 million. And once we get a surplus of $2 million, there's a one-way sweep of day's cash on hand that goes into a savings account for the county. We can't take it out once we put it in. We sweep it over. It stays in that savings account over the five-year period. After five years, or until such a time as we accumulate savings of 18 to 24 million, Hall County is obligated to acquire HMC for the value of those funds invested. If the county savings account reaches 24 million prior to five years, it automatically triggers that merger or that transaction. If the funds accumulated are less than 18 million in five years, Hall County Hospital Authority has the option to acquire. And they have 90 days to let us know that. All funds accumulated in that county savings account will be applied to the outstanding bond debt that is related to past hospital transactions. You all know the county carries a load of debt related to decisions made in the past specifically for the hospital. They took on that responsibility and then said, and hospital, you're on your own. So we're, so we're navigating that. And generously, the citizens of the county are paying for that. We'd like to find a mechanism, and we purposefully designed this, that we could pay down that debt when this deal is transacted so that it relieves the taxpayers of paying for that. <coughs> so it's really a three-party deal. It's Habersham, mm. Medical Center stays open, the county gets funds to pay down the debt, and Northeast Medical Center gets a viable and growing hospital. So it's really a three-way win-win-win if we navigate it correctly. Habersham Hospital Authority will transfer the assets of HMC to the Hospital Authority of Hall County in the city of Gainesville under the Georgia Hospital <coughs> Authority's law provisions, which is what I was referencing earlier. The Hospital Authority of Hall County and the City of Gainesville then will lease back HMC to Northeast Georgia Medical Center to operate. So that's, that's how that works today. As an operating enterprise, our property, plant, and equipment exceeding $100,000 per asset is 20.5, as I pointed out earlier, based on the audited financials, or the pre-audited financials, I should say. If the hospital is closed, the value of the assets would be limited to the amount any third party would pay for those individual assets. And as I pointed out earlier, that is usually severely constrained by picking and choosing equipment, furniture, whatever people are willing to pay for it. Our earnings over several years have declined approximately $5 million per year for several years due to market share loss and federal reimbursement changes. And that's resulted in that negative $10 million equity that I showed you earlier. Now, what happens, we envision, once we get to that merger point? What are the positives and what are the potential negatives? The benefits are that we have a health care system that provides local access for our citizens in Habersham County. 
We're also within a system that can provide care at all levels of severity and specialty needed, which is a great thing because it's a very smooth transition within a system to get what you need. Very important to Haverton County is that we continue to be an economic engine for this county. I don't know how many of you have read the economic impact studies that are done periodically, but the last one was 2017. The estimate of economic impact of this hospital on this county was $86 million. And we provided $5 million in free and uncompensated care. Now, how many of you have been to a community where the local hospital has closed? It's devastating. It is truly devastating. You cannot imagine. It's like a bomb went off in the middle of town. Everything around you closes. You can't develop economically because a lot of companies will not come to a county without its local hospital. So very, very important point that you can't, you don't, you don't know it until you see it, but when it happens, it's pretty severe. And last, as we talked about, the taxpayer gets some relief from a percentage of bond repayment. Now, the potential adverse outcome, we will lose some of the local control for decision making here in the county. When we become part of a system, as everybody does, you lose some local control. You still have a lot of input, but you lose some local control. As someone who's worked in big systems before and small hospitals as well, I can tell you there's pros and cons to that, but it is something to understand. Secondly, the bond debt payoff amount is very dependent on the cash amount accumulated in that savings account. Today, we have an estimate of what that is, but we don't know for sure until we know for sure. So those are the potential pros and cons. Now, I'm also obligated to tell you who's leading this effort um, in the interim as we're moving towards that five-year mark. There's me. Um, I came here in October of 17. I've been in healthcare 40 years. I know you think I'm 29, but I'm not. Uh, I've been in healthcare for a long time. I've had 30 years in management and administrative roles. And the last 15 years, I've specifically done turnaround work with, with struggling hospitals, which is how I got here initially. Um, I have two master's degrees in business administration and nursing administration. Steve Champa, over here behind me, is uh, the interim CFO of Habersham Medical Center. He's actually been here a year and a half. He has 33 years of financial management experience, including 30 in healthcare. He comes out of an accounting background, but he's done strategic planning, financial operations, and revenue cycle work. Um, he's also had a lot of experience with accountable care organizations, of which Northeast Georgia is uh, in the process of creating. Uh, Lindy Mitchell, back there in the pink jacket, is our Chief Nursing Officer and Vice pa President of Patient Care Services. She has two associate degrees from Truett McCall in Criminal Justice and General Studies. Now, every time we have a, uh, you know, a law enforcement question, we go to Randy and she tells us what to do. Um, she has also completed her BSN um, and is working on her MBA and will finish that next year. Tyler Williams, also behind me, Vice President of Strategy, Business Development, and Governmental Relations. Uh, Tyler has been in his role probably the least amount of time of anybody. That's why he looks younger than I look. Um, but he's been with us for five years. He started out here as a project director um, and has been promoted to a vice president uh, a year and a half ago. Is that, that right, Tyler? Yeah. Two years ago. Um, he has a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's in healthcare administration as well. Uh, he's great at research and we go to him whenever we have a question we can't answer. Uh, Lee Honeycutt, right back there. Uh, Lee has a master's in education and she also has an MBA. Uh, she's been a speech pathologist most of her career, came to us as the manager of home care, um, moved over to work with me uh, because I needed a compliance officer and she's great at just following the rules and making sure everybody else does, which is exactly what you need in a compliance officer. She's currently certified in healthcare compliance, and she also took over HR services a few months back. Thank you. Uh, Keisha Quinscale, also in the back there. Keisha joined us, probably our newest member of the senior team. Uh, a very interesting background. She's a graduate of Tulane, and she actually did a lot of research and work um, in, uh, in Africa 
which I find fascinating. Uh, she's done all of her work. She has a master's in public administration, and she's done all of her work in nonprofit management, has worked for the American Cancer Society, Red Cross, Boys and Girls Club, and the Turner Foundation. She works with us on philanthropy and marketing. And then Angie, in, in the very back, uh, she's our pharmacist, so she keeps us in line and makes sure that we're behaving ourselves with regard to drug use. Uh, but she's, a, she's been a great addition to our team. She oversees all the ancillary services and uh, has a pharmacy degree and has been with us as a director of pharmacy and now as our vice president for ancillary services. Okay. This is our co-branded logo. And I wanted you to see this over here, our badge, our affiliate badge with Northeast Georgia Medical Center and Habersham working together for a healthier tomorrow. And that's what we're about is working together for healthier tomorrows for this community. And for those of you who know Dr. Ratchford, that's Dr. Ratchford over here with his ED client. Okay, now we're going to questions and answers. So, anybody want to ask a question, we can record your name. Yes, I've got to have at least three or we can't leave. Would you clarify, perhaps it was in the overheads and I just missed it, what entities must make a decision so that the legal process and the financial process can proceed as you described? We have the hospital authority, we have the county commission, we have the, I guess that's it. And, oh, I'm sorry, then the city okay. of Gainesville, Cavallis County, and the Southern. Would you just sort of clarify uh, when, the, the, when the decisions need to be made mm -hmm. and um, who makes them? Uh, do you want to take that or you want me to take that? I will first tell you that we've already been through the decision-making process. Um, all three parties were at the table throughout the negotiation, the county, the hospital and Northeast Georgia Medical Center, we all sat together and worked through every detail of these agreements. We had to have a vote from the hospital authority, we had to have a vote from the uh, commissioners, and we had to have a vote from Hall County commissioners as well as Northeast Georgia Medical Center, all of which were completed. Did I answer that? Okay. Yes, sir. I have a question to say that we're on a downward slope the last seven years on our my concern is really is we're required now to operate for five years. What if things don't? We get rosy and we continue to lose money for five years. Who's going to pay for that? How do you pay for that? Supposing instead of having 18 million in this account, you end up with five million negative. Well, it wouldn't be negative because it wouldn't go in. But you end up with zero in your account. Then the way it reads to me is that then North, East, North Georgia Medical Center come in and take the assets with no payment. So that's one question I had another one on that same line, which is to me calling five million dollar investment is limited to expanding what you've got as a purchase price is a bit absurd because at the end technically you get no money. You've improved the assets. So at the end you've got nothing. So it looks to me like there's no purchase price and that was my question. So my question is, could we conceivably in the five years actually have incurred another few million dollars in debt, get zero back, and Gainesville takes over the hospital at that point? And you still have the original debt plus possibly now some additional debt. Mm -hmm. did, did you all hear that question in the back? Okay. So the possibility does exist that as we as we project our growth 
in our additional revenue, it doesn't happen as we project. To your point of, you know, we, we think we're going to accrue $24 million over five years. There's a possibility it would be something less than that. It could actually be something more than that. Until we navigate this, we're not going to know for sure until we get to the end of that five years. But that is a possibility. As to the payments, Northeast Georgia Medical Center is contributing $3 million a year for five years, so $15 million. That is a payment. How is that a payment if they tell you what you've got to use it for? They, they have not. They have said it's for capital expansion. Yeah, so if I had 50 acres and I sold it to you for $500,000 and you said, fine, I'll give you $500,000 over five years, but you got to clear the land, improve the pasture, put in barns, put in water. At the end of five years, I realized I don't have anything. Right. I'm out of everything. The 500000 went right back into the asset that I sold you, theoretically, but in reality, I didn't because you're requiring these investments. Now, if you did say $5 million goes to the hospital to use as they want, to me, that would be a purchase price. But the, um, and it's really a matter of aligning incentives. Okay, from the Northeast Georgia Medical Center perspective, um, if they gave us the $3 million a year and said, use it however, the thought might be that rather than our putting our concerted efforts to really marketing and growing this organization, we might not, right? And so if, we, if they insist that we invest it in capital growth, that forces us to improve the facility for the purposes of improving our capture of market share. So we're trying to align those incentives appropriately um, and the only the only constraint was you need to spend it on capital. And by the way, make sure you have enough patient capacity for growth. And by the way, make sure your IT system works, which believe me is important. We didn't have any problem with that. Those were really the only constraints. So really you get nothing. Right. Oh, no, we, we, no. my voice, I'm turning over a, a cold. I'll try and talk as loud as I can. But we do currently have significant capacity issues if we were to uh, regain the market share that this county frankly once had. So as part of working together and, and attracting volume back to this organization, uh, it, it only works if we're actually prepared to accommodate it and provide a high quality level of service. We can't do that without future capital expenditure. Uh, we also have an IT system that is functioning but it's really not state-of-the-art. And so uh, in order for the providers who are coming through the door uh, to work well with our, our staff and our community, uh, we really need an upgrade there as well. So it, it's about creating the, uh, uh, the fundamentals to allow this organization to uh, embrace that volume growth. It, without that capital expenditure, we would really struggle to embrace anything. And if you think about this way, our options are improve the organization, work to regain the market share, and leave a functioning hospital behind for Habersham County, or not, and close it. So my, my last question I have then is, my understanding is at the end of the five years, there are no, like right now, we're required well, now, I guess, to operate five years regardless. Make money, lose money, we've got to go five years. The day they take over, they're not required to continue to operate. I mean, you hope they will, but they're not required to. They could technically liquidate everything, get their 15 million back, and take a hike. Nursing home makes money, so this, as I understand it, was never put in. I had asked about that early on, and I understand that never got put in. So there is no requirement in the contract for them to continue to come in and take over the hospital at the end of five years. <laughs> so I'm from Northeast Georgia Health System. I'm Tracy Lyman, um, and uh, Lynn's done a, a nice job, I think, um, summarizing the intent around this. Um, you know, we believe that Habersham is a very important resource for this community. Um, we feel like it has the opportunity to play an even more important role. But as Lynn described, as Steve described, the ability right now for the hospital to invest and create something that has that um, strong 
Um, likelihood of success is, is minimal at this point. So you know, we did try to pull together um, what I would call as a partnership that puts Caverton in the very best position to play a more important role in this geography. Um, you know, there are likely still in Caverton County. Or whoever they assign it to, it says a subsidiary. It doesn't necessarily work to be still domestic. It, it well, is. One, just to further that, I'm Sean Cowles. I work in public relations and marketing for Morgan Stewart Health System. And I think, to your point, is there any firm requirement on that? Uh, no. But uh, I think if you look at our operating history and what we've done throughout this region, um, all you have to do is look at Lumpkin County, uh, over on the 400 corridor, where Chesapeake Regional Hospital, similar struggling position, unfortunately closed its doors before anything was reached. Um, but then once we stepped in, we reopened the facility there in July of this year. Um, we've invested significantly in that facility to get it up and running, I think, to the tune of around $13 million total. Um, we've been able to stabilize emergency services in that community, uh, put inpatient beds back in that community, and now we're focused on opening a new hospital that's closer to the 400 highway rather than it being along the property. So I think if you take a look at that, what we're doing here with this uh, this vision, um, picking up a hospital in Barrow County three years ago, um, where again, those are great examples of where we've moved into these communities to try to help those hospitals. And I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, too, that it's completely um, just out of um, selflessness. Uh, there's there's some benefit for our health system involved as well. If any of you have been to Gainesville and found it's often hard to find a parking space, you get in, you face long waits, and a lot of it's because we're helping patients from this community already who are bypassing this hospital and coming to Gainesville. So, Honestly, selfishly, to some degree, um, if we can help people stay here closer <laughs> to home in Haversham County, get the care they need and use this hospital, keep the dollars here in this county, it also alleviates the strain on Gainesville. And we can, we can serve that community better as well while still being there to provide a higher level of care if patients can't receive that here in Haversham County. So, to your point, no, no requirement, but we would hope that our, our past performance demonstrates that we're here to help this community along. No, no, absolutely. All good. That's all the good. reason I wanted them to answer that is because I can't speak to their long-term strategy, but I do know from our conversations when we're all around the table that strategically they they want this to be a hub for this section of their market share because they cannot provide capacity for everybody that comes there today, never mind tomorrow, it should be closed. So it's pretty important that we stay open to help them function better. If you, um, if you look at hospital finance is one of those things that you really can't explain to people. It's that complicated. But we get paid uh, in a variety of ways. But one of those is the acuity level of the patient. They have the capacity to take care of high acuity patients, very sick patients. Our community hospital should not take care of very sick patients. We should take care of lesser acuity. So if they are full of low acuity patients down in Gainesville, it prevents them from taking care of the high acuity patients. So it behooves them to have this place open and keep people local that can stay local. So it is a strategic imperative for them, um, and, and I really needed them to explain that. Yes, ma'am. I find that interesting that you would say that hospital finance is very difficult to understand. So is hospital bills, considering the care system yeah. that you have. Audrey. What other, and I'm so glad that we have people here from Lincoln Shores Medical mm -hmm. Center here to, to address this. What other county hospitals or regional hospitals is, are you currently working with this type of a symbiotic relationship or of a, of a purchase um, in Georgia? Are there others? You talked about Chesapeake and Barrow mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. um, and are there others that you are currently doing, like in Franklin County, Phoenix County, or any, any other place at this time? Is this the only um, hospital that you're looking at? Um, we are we're not actively having conversations with the folks. I can hear from Brian because I'm oh, looking at you. The folks okay. in the back of the room <laughs> might not. Well, so if y'all wouldn't mind when you're, when you're asking your question, Stand come up front. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we have operations in Brazelton, yeah. Gainesville, Barrow, as Sean just mentioned, um, which is kind of in that southern market. Um, 
um, and most recently in Lumpkin County. Um, so this is a, is a focus in Hammerton County, and I will tell you that all those markets are different. I think the, probably the similarities um, are probably closer to Lumpkin County, although Habersham, in terms of its draw from the northern market, you know, is, is stronger in terms of it has the ability to capture um, that market share that was discussed earlier and has done that in the past, has proven it has done that. after a fiscal year end and prior to the partner putting their name on the audit. This transaction becoming official tomorrow is a substantial subsequent event such that the audit partner simply felt that uh, 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 they would be best served to put that partner's signature on our audit report after this agreement became official. So uh, within one week, we expect our audit firm to release our financial statements looking exactly the same as the draft that was presented to the authority back in September, uh, just with the appropriate documentation of this particular subsequent, subsequent event now that it has actually become official. Okay, uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, um, I've seen a few projections, but one projection that you had from the board, the hospital is like losing money fast, right? I don't know if you know what you're talking about. But then on the projection on the sheet, you're expecting to turn that around to 75 million a year, right? Or five, 25 divided by five is five million a year. Uh, can you explain how we go from you know, losing millions every year to now we're giving five million a year? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, about, it's about revenue okay. as it relates to census. So as we work with our hospitalists and ED physicians, mm -hmm. and we retain more patients locally through concerted efforts mm -hmm. to do so, yeah. um, and market more to yeah. our community and say, use your hospital if you want your hospital to survive. Uh, our projections were, we did a lot of projections, five, seven projections, on what we believed could happen. Yeah. Uh, we chose a conservative projection so the possibility is we do better than that. And to this gentleman's point, the possibility is we do worse than that. But revenue is, is we, we have control for expenses. Revenue is very much dependent on census. So the follow-up, then I got one final one. The follow-up is, if we can turn it around in one year to five million plus, right? Maybe Governor Buell's new, uh, new Medicare package goes through or something like that. Um, <laughs> why? then why wouldn't we just keep it? Like, I, that makes no sense to me, because now we're making $25 million in five years, and then we hand it to Gainesville for 15 million? It doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm confused about that. If we're projecting to make 25 million, let's just keep it then. Part of the deal that we put together was that we work with Northeast Georgia Health System so that they can help provide the services in this area, yeah. that the people who are leaving this area go down to Hall County to receive once those individuals leave here, they're not going to come back. So working with them, we can work on keeping patients in Habersham County. If we do not do that, we will not make any money. And, and I mean, the projection will be to continue to go down because healthcare economics are based on fixed costs and uh, variable costs. We have very high fixed costs because no matter how many patients come here on a daily basis, we have to turn every machine on and run every department all throughout the day. Now, that's easier when we see more patients throughout the day because the, the variable cost associated with taking care of one more patient is not as much as it should be for any other piece of business. So the more patients we see, the higher our revenues can be. But the only way we get to that is by working with them and keeping patients here. So generally, somehow they'll send more patients up here and have a department. That's sort of the baseline of it? That is not the baseline at all. It's working with them to keep the patients here just by providing the services that they need. Okay. Yeah, they can't force anybody to make a choice. 
Okay. Um, and, and it really is around working collaboratively. Co collaboratively. If you look at why patients leave yeah. to go to Gainesville, it's around the fact that, well, first of all, we have a deficit of primary care. I don't know if you're aware of that, but we have a big deficit of primary care. And so we have to work together to start recruiting and getting more physicians here. So people won't go around us to find primary care in Gainesville. Secondly, we don't have specialty services that we need. When we work at Northeast Georgia Medical Center, we can actually start working together to provide rotating clinics, to provide specific physicians that provide services we don't have today. And that's critical. We can't do that on our own. Thank you. I do want to add one more point, though, which is um, the uh, financing of healthcare. Five years from now, if it stays on the trend of certainly what I've seen throughout my career, is only going to get more and more challenging. Hospitals need to build essentially better and better mousetraps in order just to hold their revenue. There are private insurers out there who come back at you and deny claims months after they've paid the claim, causing organizations to uh, uh, build a staff to appeal. There are some large hospitals, uh, actually including Northeast Georgia, who are now hiring uh, uh, physicians or nurse practitioners to be part of their revenue cycle team just to ensure that they guard against keeping the dollars that they've already built and collected. We don't have that. Uh, and uh, as best we can tell right now, that environment is only going to get more and more and more challenging. So uh, the revenue cycle, the staff that we have today, uh, may, may not be competent to uh, remain competitive with the evolution of, of healthcare finance moving forward. Uh, there, there's something to be said for economies of scale and uh, being part of a larger organization. That's just one example, I'm sure there's several others. Well, and just to jump in, too, just to underscore, really, I think when it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of this, it can't be understated. This, this arrangement will either succeed or it will fail based largely on how much this community uses this hospital. That's the whole key of how it's set up in Sandwich. So to your point, that $5 million projection is, is literally, that, that boils down to people's that money, that $5 million projection, that balance up doesn't exist unless people start coming to this facility. That's really the entire reason why our, our facility, Northeast Georgia Health System, is even involved in this transaction. Is again, if this hospital were to close its doors, all those patients rush to Gainesville and other places where some of them are already going. Mm -hmm. So what can we do? How can we lend our brand to help inject new confidence into this facility, bring in best practices and operation, well, then point, we can't make decisions for patients, but hopefully we can make sure that the environment of care here is one that this, this community can be confident in, so that people will start using it, turn some of that projection around. I think that's everybody that was on the list. Is there anybody else who had any comments? I have one question, question on the staff employees. On the half of the staff and employees. Sure. My understanding, what I've been told, is there is a paragraph in the agreement where at the end of five years, if this is sold, transferred over, all the employee benefits just flat go away to the responsibility of HMC from the past. In most acquisitions I was involved with, there was always some plan incorporated to take care of things like accumulated vacation or retirements or 401k. My understanding is that paragraph is carte blanche cut. So everybody that was here, if they had earned up to three weeks vacation, they start over. That's, that's incorrect. Um, we do have to pay out all accumulated. You pay it out. So what I'm saying is, that, yes. But the new employees that stayed, which I assume most of them would, they lose all prior seniority to the benefit. That is also incorrect. One of the things that we um, we worked with Northeast Georgia was to make sure that the employees were protected and could carry over. Um, if I remember correctly, at least two weeks worth of paid time off. So when they did start at with Northeast Georgia Health System, should they decide that they want to transfer over, also that they would have some time. That they could take away and still be paid. Or they could pay that out. Accumulation. Or they could pay it out. And do you know that does, actually that does not exist in the percentage of the agreement based on what I read. That. I know for a fact that it does. I've Can read every iteration of it. Can I read the meeting? Would you mind showing me the paragraph where that's at? Yes. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. 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 Trust me, I read them all. The Northeast Georgia. I have to. The Northeast Georgia CFO, Brian Shinas, he was quick to identify that as an important point. It wasn't. We had to fight very hard for it all. He 
recognize that probably within the first month, someone was going to have a, a sick relative or some need to be out. And, and why would they want to be in that situation of having to address family situations or what have you, employees? They were, they were, they were quick to recognize the need for that. Would be uh, problematic. Sure that would be problematic. Be problematic. Of course, they have their own benefit package, which everybody would be transferring to. So. So we just need to close ours down so they can transfer over, but we do pay out the benefits that are accumulated at that time. Okay. Yes. I, I can actually speak to that. Yeah. I'm part of uh, the Jewish and Episcopal thing. We were uh, acquired three years ago, and my seniority was transferred over. So I, I, my five years is going to be. I have two years of full thing. So um, so all of that that was that was there. The benefits actually compared to what we had before. That is actually better. So I can I can speak to that on, on my personal side. So I, I think it was a, a good transaction. Scary at first, but it, it, it turned out well. It's always scary. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Well, and, and I do appreciate you speaking up because I, I think that that speaks to really where our intent is, is that there's a lot of instability in rural health care today. And, and that's an example of a clinic that has been there for a long time. And we you know, we came together and, and developed a partnership that, you know, keeps access to care stable in Stevens County at, at Patella Clinic and also in some of the other locations where Patella Clinic actually has offices. So it's not, you know, this is a very different scale, but not dissimilar intent in terms of how we create stability in this northern region and access to care. Well, I work at Patella Clinic, but I live here in Havertown, so that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Well, and ma'am, to your question earlier about what other relationships that we have with other hospitals. I think, again, if you take a look at consolidation across the state of Georgia, you're not going to find another agreement like this one. It's very uniquely structured. A lot of other places, take uh, hospitals in Columbus, Georgia, for instance, that have been bought out by larger systems. Those are, those are literally buyouts, where another hot, larger system's coming in and taking a smaller hospital that's starting to decline, but has not reached a critical point yet. In this case, I think it's demonstrated by not only the leadership of the hospitals being aligned, but also the county having a seat at the table and the authority that's there, I think speaks to the fact that this is truly being done in the best of public interest um, to, to save a hospital and to keep the doors open. Mm -hmm. Tom, and you just look at the economic impact for the shutter stores would not only be critical for the county economically, but again, from a healthcare infrastructure standpoint, it, it would be detrimental. I can also speak to your point about double the turn. Um, we have some of our providers here with us tonight, and we, of course, track this very carefully. We've been through the first couple of months in this agreement with the clinical services, and we are seeing that turn happen. And we have some confidence if we stay focused on it, it's going to keep going. It's a very good relationship with the providers that we have now because we go to them and ask, you know, what do you guys need to help take care of more patients here? And that's just mainly on the services that we offer within the hospital. But moving forward, we will have to look at, on the outpatient side, you know, what do you need as patients to, to stay in this county? What can we provide that makes them feel better staying up here versus having to drive down the hospital? Other questions? Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Other, anybody else have a question you want to put out there for the record? I, I guess I have one last. This is not too important. How much will the? You, I'm assuming you're going to upgrade Epic. Is that the plan? Is that part of the IT infrastructure? We have to work through that, but that okay. is that's our hope. Uh, my worry is how much of the 15 million is just going to be the transfer to Epic? That's all. That's going to be an additional million we're going to pocket in there. Oh goodness, no. No, no, no. We're we're looking at two different systems. Okay. One being Epic and one being um, an upgrade of the system we have. And until we work through those numbers, we won't have an answer for that. But they'll both be comparable in price. Okay. And it won't be anything like that. Okay. Good <laughs> What are the plans for 15 minutes? Well, um, you won't really want to hear it. Okay, I'm curious because that's okay. okay. Okay, so our first our first initiative was how do we make more beds, right? How do we care for this increased capacity? That was the that was the primary concern of Northeast Georgia Medical Center as we started talking. Um, any of you ever been to our physical therapy services? Ben, you want to raise your hand back there, Ben? Ben is our, uh, manages all of our physical therapy. He's immensely popular and everybody loves him because he does such a great job. Um, but our physical therapy services are housed right in the middle of one of our long-term care 
facility. We have two. We have Habersham Home East and Habersham Home West. That costs us more money to have two locations, right? And they're both dated, and they're not competitive with the market. So the first thing we're going to do, because Ben continues to grow and he's busting up the seniors. <coughs> Additionally, we have a cardiac rehab program that's housed in the hospital that has outgrown its, its space. We're going to be building a new rehab center at the back of the campus that will be for rehab purposes. All physical therapy, all cardiac therapy uh, will go back into that building as well as our orthopedic practice. Okay, so that'll be a nice new facility for those patients because those services are going like crazy. Um, we go back into Habersham Home West where we're taking it out of. We remodel that space. We move the residents on this end over to that end and we remodel the remaining space and we make 88 beds which is what our license is. We take all of Habersham Home East and we put it into that one building. That automatically makes it more efficient, saves us dollars over the long run, and makes us competitive with the market, which we are not today. Then we have Habersham Home East, which was an old Gilberton facility. I don't know if y'all remember those days, but back after the war, we used Gilberton dollars to help build hospitals. And that literally, that, that wing was built with, <laughs> I remember those days, but that, that wing we cannot uh, reconstruct because it's old, it has asbestos in the walls, but we could put lipstick on it, new floors, new, new paint, and we could use that for observation. It just so happens to be right next to our emergency department. So we could house our observation patients who stay for 24 48 hours at most there. We can have as many of those as we want by law. Then we can use our upstairs rooms for inpatient. Today we have to put them all up there. And that gives us a lot more capacity. So there's three parts to the domino that have to happen over the next couple of years. And we have to put in a new IT system. <laughs> Other questions? Isn't that fun to think about that? Oh, and, and, and that's not to mention the fact that uh, we have a wish list from our managers of capital equipment upgrades well. that uh, right now already exceed six million dollars that we have to carefully manage uh, when, when does end of life come and, and when do we actually need to invest uh, so that even when uh, aside from those projects uh, there are a number of other key capital uh, things as well thank you okay any yes